Newt Gingrich, joining us now, the former House Speaker. Uh, Newt, I was catching some of your comments on uh, how this was an ill-fated mission from the start, I guess, given the fact that it, the health care measure had such low approval rate. I think it was down to 16 or 17 percent. So it, it mission should have been aborted prior, but it wasn't. And then it was ultimately shelved. But everyone is seizing on the fact, oh, Republicans are done, they're finished, they're going nowhere fast. Uh, what do you make of all of that? Well, it seems to me the very same people thought we'd have uh, President Hillary Clinton and the very same people thought we'd have a Republican nominee, Jeb Bush. And you know, at what point. point do we just shrug our shoulders and say, you know, if you're determined to be an idiot, you can be. I mean, it's, you know, it's a free country. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of idiots who get to be on television. Uh, uh, tell me about it. I built a career reality. on it. Let, now, let me ask you, though, Newt. I mean, I'm looking at this. <laughs> I'm looking at this, and I'm saying it does add to the pressure on Republicans to get a win for the Gipper or to get a win for Donald Trump and to put a lot of their differences sure. aside. Would that include, and would Newt Gingrich agree, that it's okay well, for, for Republicans who are worried about uh, deficits getting worse before they get better, with the revenue you get from tax cuts, that they put that aside for the time being and just vote for big tax cuts? Well, first of all, they ought to vote for a very big real tax cut. Ronald Reagan created 18 million new jobs by the time of his farewell address in, 2000, in 1988. 18 million new jobs. I'd rather have a big tax cut with a lot of jobs than a small tax cut that the green eye shade uh, accountants can be happy with that don't create any jobs. Second, the first thing they do, ought to do is open up the whole issue of infrastructure. You can get at least half the Democratic Party to work with you to pass an infrastructure bill. You can start to build a Trump majority, which is bigger than the Republican majority. Uh, and then, and this will be my newsletter tomorrow, uh, you can go back to health, but I would do infrastructure, I would do taxes in a big way, in and then I would order, go back to health after I did those two, tax cuts? but I would go back to health, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, you infrastructure before the tax cuts? I, absolutely. I, I would start doing infrastructure this afternoon, because it lets you go to every Democrat and every Republican and say, in terms of safety, creating jobs, and quality of life, what do you need in your district, what do you need in your state? And you can bring together a bipartisan coalition, get them in the habit of working together, and then as you start to do the tax bill, you go back to that same coalition and say, all right, under what circumstance could you vote for a big tax cut? And now you start bringing in Democrats, and you, have, you don't want to do things on a narrowly partisan basis if you're going to be a governing party. You want to, when we did welfare reform, we had half the Democrats, 101 to 101, vote for us. When I helped Reagan pass the tax cut in 81, we had one out of every three Democrats vote for us. When we did uh, the Balanced Budget Act of 97, we had a huge block of Democrats vote for it. Uh, you know, get out of this idea of thinking that you're going to give 20 or 30 people a veto build a bipartisan approach, build real change on a big scale. Donald Trump means nothing if it isn't big or huge, as he would say it. Yeah. So let's go for a huge tax cut, a huge infrastructure program, and then let's go back on a bipartisan basis and fix the health system. But in other words, the carrot you use for getting Democratic votes for tax cuts would be on infrastructure. Well, and also what kind of tax cuts do they want? I mean, there are a number of Democrats who represent areas that would have a very big interest in tax cuts, so I wouldn't automatically assume, you know, it's one thing to get votes for a tax increase, but if you can't go out and get votes for a tax cut, then you're not communicating very well. Do you think that, in retrospect, it's easy to play Monday morning quarterback, that they should have pursued the tax cut thing first because there was much broader agreement on that and the potential to reach across the aisle on that than on the health care thing? Well, I think they should have pursued infrastructure first, tax cuts second, and health care third. I also think the way they designed it, and this will be in my newsletter in detail tomorrow, it was just a wrong design. It, 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 it neglected everything Reagan and Thatcher taught us. It neglected everything we did right uh, in welfare reform and balanced budget. Uh, and it went out and tried to write an insider bill in the age of Donald Trump. Uh, this is not a country that wants insider game playing. Uh, and so you've got to think of the legislative branch as being part of the swamp, too, and ask yourself, how do we get the American people engaged? You get a bill that's at 17 percent approval, you shouldn't vote on it. Yeah, I know you're and right about that. And that's where it was on Friday. What about the Freedom Caucus and some of these conservative members who are getting the blame for, for blocking this? One of the things that Texas Congressman Ted Poe said, 
in quitting the Freedom Caucuses, um, there was no flexibility with these guys. He said they'd vote against the Ten Commandments. What did you make of that? Well, they might or might not. We could put that to the test. Um, what, what I would say is, first of all, not voting on Friday was really good. Uh, the Democrats lost their majority for the first time in 40 years after they tried to push through Hillary Care. The Democrats lost their majority again in 2010 after they pushed through Obamacare. You give me, if we'd had all of our House Republicans line up and vote yes on a bill that was at 17 percent approval, that means four out of five Americans were not approving. And I'll guarantee you the Democrats would have had a field day. So I think the Freedom Caucus, whether they intended to or not, may have saved House Republicans from a vote that would have been potentially very destructive. And now everybody ought to just get over it. Let's look at the future. Let's learn the lessons and recognize it took Reagan eight months to pass a tax cut. It took us 18 months to pass welfare reform. It took uh, Pelosi and Obama eight months to pass Obamacare. Uh, we're not in a rush here. We don't have to get everything done by Easter. The fact is these guys are going to be in office for two years. Trump's going to be in office for four years. They should not be panicked by the daily talk shows and the weekly uh, magazines. They're horrible, those talk shows, too. I mean, especially the ones on cable. Forget, don't get me started. Um, Newt Gingrich, it's always good seeing you, my friend. Thank you very, very much. Take care.